Hello and welcome to my preposterously late review of Hermes H.24. Apologies for the lateness. I've had a bit of a mixed experience with this fragrance. You know, when I first smelt it, I actually really just didn't like it. I actually found it very un uninteresting, found it boring. Um, I've st stuck with the original title, the most uninteresting fragrance in the world, because that's how I felt. Two months later, I started to enjoy it a little bit more. And it could either be, I just sort of knew what I was getting into and I, that can happen, you just kind of engage with it more, you know what you're gonna get. Or two, and whenever somebody says this to me, I roll my eyes. So please, if you roll your eyes, I completely understand. It, it smells fuller now, it smells richer than it did. Um, so maybe it maturated, as some people do actually say, oh well, my, my bottle hadn't maturated yet and the smell hadn't completely developed. I don't know if that can happen. I've heard varying reports. In theory, it could happen. But you know, it's it's good to keep a bit of a skeptical eye on that. But yes, to me, it smells a little bit richer than what I originally got, so that's kind of pleasant. But on the whole, this is an incredibly straightforward, incredibly aldehydic, regular fragrance. Like, the tagline was, so this is the future of fragrance. That's what I meant, so this is the future of fragrance. GQ did a whole propaganda, propaganda article on it. Oh, it's the future. But I smelt it and I thought, well, I've actually smelt this lots of times recently. I've smelt this with Durham 2020. I've smelt it to a degree with the Sauvage EDP and the Sauvage Parfum. It's just very nice and just very pleasant. And hey, you know, that can work. Uh, Lotus A did that to a degree. I think it was actually a bit more complicated and it was fine. You know, one of my favorite fragrances of all time, Tommy Hilfiger, Tommy Cologne is just a very nice and pleasant and safe fragrance. So there's an argument for both. But let's go into the full review. Um, let's start as we always do with, would you like this? So if you are somebody who wants something quite safe <laughs> and quite nice, this is it for you. And that's the problem. It's a very limiting fragrance in who I can recommend it to. This is a fragrance that has been built and constructed for everybody. And this is kind of one of my pet peeves with the fragrance world and the fragrance industry at the moment. There is a dilution. There are just fragrances just being made for mass market. And that's because fragrance in general is in a bit of trouble. You know, um, it was in a lot of trouble with the internet. And then, of course, it got into more trouble with COVID. Yeah, you know, people aren't buying fragrances as much as they used to. You have intense collectors like me, um, but it's not at its peak of popularity. It probably will be in a few years. You know, it goes up and down as anything does. Um, I recently found out from a, a friend of mine who works in a whiskey shop in Edinburgh that whiskey is just the craziest that it's ever been. And it's the most popular that it's been to the point where um, I have a bottle of Isle of Aaron Gold, which is a liqueur, it's like Bailey's. Right, and that's made by the Aaron Distillery. They are the last liqueur being made, um, essentially, in the whiskey world. A lot of whiskey, ho uh, whiskey houses, a lot of whiskey distilleries were making liqueurs and, you know, honey and uh, cinnamon liqueurs and things like that and uh, Irish creams. The demand for whiskey is now so intense, they've stopped all that. They just have to focus on making single malt because, of course, of whiskey, it's at minimum an eight year period. And they have to look into the future. They have to look in to the future of eight years or eight, 10, 12 and go, well, will whiskey be popular in eight years? And eight years ago, they didn't think that whiskey would be as popular as it is today. And now they're running short and it's all mayhem. So everything goes through its little phase. A um, little bit of tidbit whiskey knowledge there for you. So fragrance is the same. Fragrance is not the massive kind of thing that it, that it has been. Uh, in the mid-2000s and even the early 2010s. It has waned a little bit. So then you get fragrances like this. This is when you get the safer releases. This is where you get fragrances that essentially anybody can buy and anybody can go for. Dior releasing Sauvage Elixir was daring for them. Kind of an odd move, but they've done it. But um, so would you like this? Just kind of test it. You know, if you like watery, um, pleasant, kind of green fragrances, fragrances that you know will get you good attention. If you like summer fragrances, if you like light fragrances, if you like watery textured fragrances, this will be for you. This will work for you. 
the only caveat that I'd say is that to me, this is very, very plain. It's very plain. But for some of you, that will work and that will be perfectly fine. So if you're looking for one of the easiest fragrances you could ever buy, ever, this could work. I know there are gonna be some people in the com comments going, oh, well, that's not for me. I tried this fragrance and it was, you know, too extreme and too over the top. Um, fair enough, there might be some of you out there that that's true. But for most of you, I'd put money on it. This is gonna be a very, very tame release. Presentation, uh, yeah. It's a cool shape. It's nice, I like the little title there, like the emboss with the uh, Hermes. Um, it's trying to be futuristic. It's trying to be very, very modern. This reminds me a lot of, um, you know, modern style, like really, really expensive and really kind of rich houses that you see where, because that's now the, the style with, with houses and most modern things are very simplistic, very sh simple shapes. That's kind of where we've moved, moved into in the late 2010s and the early 2020s. And this is kind of no different. It's modern, it's stylistic. I'd give it a four out of five. Scent-wise, opening's brilliant. Opening's really, really lovely. I'll just kind of give myself another dash here. Opening's full and bright, and it's very Hermes-like. It reminds me of Eau de Mave to a degree. Not in the same sort of vibe or even scent. It's just that explosion of florals, of sweetness, of fruit. Sophisticated, you know, it's good, it's it's pleasant, it works. But then after five minutes, man, <laughs> downhill. It's just very, very aldehydic and very straightforward and pleasant enough. No peaks, no valleys, it really is openings here and then we sort of just crash in the roller coaster and that's your lot and it goes more towards what 20, Duom 2020 is doing. I do feel as though it's a bit richer than when I first smelt it. I just feel as though it's something missing. You know, I feel as though this is a Guerlain fragrance trapped in a mainstream designer's body. Because Guerlain does stuff like this. They do it a lot with, um, oh, the, the line that I have, uh, Pampaloon from, um, I think it's, oh God, I can't remember, the Aqualine that they do. They, they do tons of these wonderful uh, summer-based fragrances that have a lot of fruits and a lot of florals. This smells like, sort of like the idea of one of those fragrances, but done in this kind of weird synthetic, aldehydic way. Um, and it's not the most natural smelling, especially as it dries down. Especially as it dries down, it's not, it's not great. I get like an almond thing. I also get a bit of almond and like a little bit of chlorine and that's not great. You know, it's pleasant enough, it's fine and I kind of enjoy it um, and I have enjoyed wearing it some of the days in summer but there is something, if you're looking for a natural fragrance, looking for a really good natural fragrance, don't go for this. Go for one of the girl lanes. So I'd say scent wise it's probably uh, straight down the middle, three out of five. Projection longevity is a bit shit, if I'm honest. Um, I'd say just weak. Not terrible, not skin scent, but on me, for you know what I've got out of it, I'd say both would be overall, projection longevity would be a two out of five. So it's, you can smell it, but you need high heat. You know, in the high heat, this is still probably maybe maximum a three out of five, but that's pushing it. It's a very just sort of easy, serene fragrance. And as time goes on, what you are smelling isn't the most natural. I would recommend, I think it's the Aqua Allegoria line from Guerlain, but I will leave a link down below <laughs> about uh, that line. But this is straight out of that Guerlain line, but done kind of not well. And, and I think actually that that line of um, fragrances by Guerlain, they're actually cheaper. But if you kind of like the idea of this, just go wild. Just go to a Guerlain boutique and, and test them, because they're great. This is, to me, probably not the future of fragrance, but the present of fragrance. Everything is going to get a bit blander. Probably for the next three to five years, you're going to just see fragrances release like this, where they're very tame, they're very simple, they're very straightforward. Um, some of you have been asking where's the day that Dior died video. Um, 
just had to be momentarily taken down because I, I, I discussed this as well. Momentarily had to be taken down uh, because of a rights issue with one of the clips that I used um, to make a point. So I'm just going to basically pay a royalty. Um, and when that royalty is paid, I'll put the video back up. So don't worry, it will be coming back. That's absolutely fine. Um, but yeah, in general, fragrances are getting tamer and they're getting a bit more boring. And that's sad for people like me and maybe for people like you. Um, overall, a three out of five, I'd say. Don't hate it. Don't love it. The syntheticness is not great. Um, but it's an easy fragrance to recommend for many people. So what I'd just suggest is just check it out. If you're looking for a casual summer fragrance, just check it out. It might really be for you. Okay, um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching. And if you do enjoy this, then of course, like, subscribe, and of course, you can donate on PayPal at info at the Thanks so much. I'll see you soon.